Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be talking about some leaks from Canada Graphs, but also we're going to be talking about what we know that is 100% confirmed for this season. So I did a video on The Flash like this the other day, but I'm going to be incorporating it with some leaks as I missed out Canada Graphs' section of leaks from a few weeks ago. Okay, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about these leaks. And so, like I said, these leaks come from Canada Graphs, so you can check out their Twitter. It will be in the description below. Also, I'm going to be reading off the blog. So his blog is actually available online. It's canadagraphs.weebly.com and that will be in the description below. And also there's going to be some photos that I'm going to use in this video that you can obviously find there and there's a lot more over there so please be sure to go over and do that. So he was able to get some photos and get some information on some of the scenes they were shooting for episode 3 so this was actually on the 10th of this month so it was you know nearly two weeks ago it was a little while back and you know by now they are probably you know edging on to about episode 5 now maybe going into production. On that as well so I'm not specifically sure as to what's specifically happening right now on this present day on the 22nd but so yeah they were filming episode 3 scenes and we found out the title recently it's blurred lines we were able to actually reveal that on the channel which was really cool because I photoshopped and changed the exposure of a script and we found out you know who's coming you know we know that there is going to be flashbacks in this episode so it does lead me to believe that a lot of the stuff with Kara and a lot of the stuff with the new characters and also James is going to be a kind of smaller part of the episode the bits that we're going to go over because this episode has young Malafaic and it has young John Jones so an element of this episode and it seems like a fairly big element of this episode is actually going to be flashbacks of sorts to Mars Okay, so this is what he actually wrote on the blog. So I caught up with the cast and crew of Supergirl filming in a couple of places a couple of weeks ago and a few days back. So to start, there was some shooting in downtown Eastside, which is a place in Vancouver. They did two scenes at different spots here. First in a museum, I saw two cast members and another person who I believe was in the scene to go in and out of there, but do not know what the scene entailed. And Melissa was there, Macabre was there, they were dressed as their normal selves, so as Kara and James, and a third person he saw go in and out, and it seemed like they had a robe on, and they had like barely any clothes underneath, so it's kind of strange, maybe it's some sort of suit, maybe it's just like, he's naked, I don't know, but they're not going to show a naked person on the show. So anyway, moving on to the next bit, after that scene wrapped, they moved across the street to a bench, at the front of a building. There they did a night scene with newcomer Stasner as William Day. He shot a scene with an older bald man. The older man crosses the street, sits down next to William, talks to him before handing him something, then getting up and leaving before William does the same a couple of moments later. Okay, so let's break down this bit of the article. So essentially they were shooting two different scenes. We had Melissa on set, we had Makada, and we had newcomer Stasner, who if you don't know, He's going to be playing a new reporter called William Day. And so what's interesting is that specific scene with Stasner as William because he's meeting this old guy. The old guy gives him something. So this leads me to believe most likely more than not, this is actually him doing his reporting skills. And, you know, it could be something more shady. It could be, you know, he's evil or something. It turns out he's kind of twisted and he's doing this undercover or whatever. But more likely rather than not it's going to be him getting some information for an article he's going to put out because he is a reporter in the end of things so yeah that's basically what we got out because you know a lot of it was done inside that museum but then we had the outside shot okay so the next bit of the article he writes the next day i saw Staz on set again with melissa and mccard shooting a scene at a building in downtown Vancouver, everyone seemed to be dressed the same as the day before, so I wonder if it was a continuation of those scenes or setups for what's to come. This time, however, the three of them were all in the scene together. It starts with William walking out of a building that they had Catco signs up around. Before he is stopped by Kara, William attempts to leave when Kara invades the space and physically stops him from leaving. Eventually, William does leave. 
just as James comes out and talks to Kara. Kara looks in the direction of where William was headed with a strange look. I don't know actually how to say the word he wrote, but you can see that on the website. Before Kara and James walk along in that same direction. What was the conversation about? Who knows? We will have to wait and see as to what was going on, but it's clear that Kara was not impressed by any of it. And yeah, so let's break this bit down. So it is a scene with all of them. Obviously, William now works with them at Catco. This is definitely a Catco building that they're coming out of. And the way that Kara supposedly looks at, you know, William and the way that Canada Graph sort of perceived everything that was going on, it seemed like Kara was not impressed and Kara is somewhat you know, agitated, I guess, I would say, or, you know, she's suspicious in some sort of way because she gives that weird look, and so with her stopping him, it seems like he was just trying to leave work, she stops him, she's got something to say, don't know what she has, maybe there's some beef going on, that look definitely suggests that there might be some sort of confrontation, so looking forward to that. Okay, so the one last thing he writes in the article, and this is of great importance, to a lot of you guys because we've been theorizing about this recently. One last thing, Canada Graphs writes, I had some random person message me privately asking if Staz's character was wearing a wedding ring. Apparently this is a big issue, so let me just state, you can clearly see in a couple of photos he's in fact wearing a wedding ring. So that's your answer, the character appears to be married. Okay, so that's of great importance to a lot of you guys because we have talked about this we sort of theorized oh is he going to be like a new love interest or car or something like that but this is kind of relaxing to me i'm very happy to be honest because i just don't feel like this season Kara needs to be back in a relationship i think either wait for monel or just wait this whole season and then next season i think it might be time that we can accept that maybe she moves on to someone else i just think still it's a little bit too soon considering the way everything stopped with Monel. So, yeah, he's got a wedding ring. It seems like he's actually married. So that is it for that part of the video. Let's talk about what we know 100% about the season. Obviously, I may miss, like, one or two small things, but these are the big things that you need to know going into the season. Everything has been confirmed on this list, and I will let you know if any of it is theorizing at all. Okay, so number one, Lena will not be in charge of Catco. She is supposedly maybe selling it or she's giving it away, but more likely than not, she's going to sell Catco and it's going to be taken over by the new character, Andrea Rojas. We'll talk about her in a little bit, but she's going to be taken over. Lena will not be in charge. And according to the trailer, it looks like there is going to be some real beef between Kara and Lena because, you know, Kara was revealed as Supergirl to Lena. And this is going to be of great importance and this is sort of going to lead down Lena's obsession with technology this season. Well, at least for the first part of the season. And so the showrunners confirmed this season its main focus is going to be on technology. Like last season was all about politics and, you know, aliens and how can they be accepted in society and things like that. So it's going to be how we use technology, how it influences us. That has been confirmed, there's going to be a new company, we know that Kelly's going to be working for that company, and that's going to be sort of linking to the technology aspect of this season. We also know that Wynn is returning, Jeremy Jordan is coming back for at least two or three episodes. It's going to be in the back half of the season, but we don't know specifically what specific episodes it's going to be, but sometime around the 100th episode, I would say expect him the 100th episode is confirmed to be episode 13 of this season, so that is after Crisis, so be on the lookout for episode 13, it's going to be massive, lots of returning characters, fingers crossed. We know that in episode 1, the villain of the episode is actually called Midnight, she's played by Jennifer Garcia, and that is going to be a, you know, just weekly villain, just a one-time villain, and she has a super suit we know that that's about it that's all we know really to do with her but now talking about the new series regulars or at least series regulars for the first part of the season we have andrea rojas who i mentioned earlier played by julie gonzalo andrea and so she's going to be appearing she's going to be in charge of catco she's going to be you know around cara danvers and james and all the new people who are going to be there, including William. So she's going to be around the Catco side of things, but also in the comics, she is a superhero. So maybe she turns into a superhero this season. 
The other main character that is being introduced is William Day. He is a reporter. He's played by Stasner, who, fun fact, is English. I had no idea until just before this video when I was watching some videos of him just to prepare. So that's really cool, and I'm looking forward to him. I think, you know, the cast have accepted him, you know, Nicole went to pry with him and it seems like he's fitting in very well, so that's very exciting. Additionally, a new actor is going to be in the show, you know, more prominently, that is Phil Lamar, who is going to be playing Malafeyak. I'm not sure if it's him actually doing the acting, but he's 100% voice acting in the finale. That was his voice that you heard from Jean's brother Malafeyak. So Malafeyak's going to be the main villain for the first part of the season. And we have confirmed that Lex Luthor is going to be returning, most likely for Crisis, potentially in some Supergirl episodes as well. Clark and Lois are going to be back in Crisis. That is obviously Tyler Hoechlin and Elizabeth Tullock, who played Lois last season in the Elseworlds crossover. Additionally, Brandon Ralph is going to be playing another version of Superman in Crisis. That's all going to be happening in Crisis. And Supergirl's Crisis episode date is December 8th at 8 p.m. so that's a special time slot still on the same day but in the Batwoman time slot and then Batwoman will be the next day then the Flash the day after then we have the break and Crisis returns with Arrow and Legends on the same very same day and so episode 1 is going to be coming out October 6th at 9 p.m. it's one hour later than usual so be on the lookout for that there is a lot of stuff that's going to be happening. I'm very excited for the season. I thought the last part of the season was really good at the end of season four. Wasn't such a big fan of the first part, but it really picked up sort of around episode four or five. And definitely in the back half, especially when Lex and Red Daughter were, you know, in focus, it was really good. However, I'm kind of happy to get rid of the politics stuff. I felt like they sacrificed a lot of story and interesting elements to combine, you know, the political ideas. So hopefully they don't make that same mistake with technology and it doesn't take over way too much. And that's all they talk about in the season. And, you know, there is no good story. But I really do have hope that they can pull out that good story for the whole season. However, last season, I felt like that story only kicked in sort of nearing the back half when Red Daughter was introduced and Lex just amped it up and it was super intriguing and I loved the end. So I'm really hoping for a good season. I very much so liked last season a lot. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. So I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.